Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Glad to be here with you today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday topic, where we will be going over and really dissecting what is carb cycling and how you may be using it right now or want to implement it in your programs in order to achieve greater body transformation goals, better insulin levels, and maybe even be able to play along with the leptin resistance that we spoke about last week or was that two weeks ago, uh, it was episode 2063 on how to overcome leptin resistance to burn more body fat. So carb cycling is one way to manipulate your macros, not difficult. So I want to teach you it just from a very simplistic standpoint, uh, that will allow you to eat your carbohydrates on some days and go lower on others. So we're going to talk about why this is used, uh, who it's used by, and maybe even just give you some quick tips and takeaways so that you'll be able to practice it a bit on your own if you choose to. So in my practice, I've seen I've seen every single different type of diet there is since about the late 90s when I got into nutrition and personal training. And even back then, there was, I mean, there was the Atkins diet, of course, and there was all sorts of different diets, but I was always into more natural bodybuilding. So I had already understood about low carbs and I understood about refeeding meals and high carb days. And all of it made sense to me even back then uh, because I got to see it actually work with myself and friends of mine and then, of course, clients. And I say, okay, well, like there's one thing to look at the research and there's one thing to look at the textbooks and there's another to say, hey, does this actually work in the real world? And it did. So a little bit different back in like the natural bodybuilding days because what you typically do is if you weren't worried about adding uh, if you wanted to add more size, more muscle, then you weren't really doing a lot of carb cycling. What you were doing is you were eating a surplus of calories with good protein, good carbs, and good fat. And your goal would be to put on as much muscle and size as possible. And then over a period of 12 to 16 weeks, you would gradually reduce your carbohydrates, you would gradually increase your cardio, and you'd look to take off as much body fat as you could. Now, of course, this is just one simplistic way that I gave you in order to lean out, but it still works to this day, right? Like it's not like this, this is not working. It still works. So there's just different ways of doing it. The cardio obviously allows you to burn more calories, especially if you're doing uh, just a slower state where you're preserving a little bit more muscle mass potentially. But again, you know, I'm a huge advocate of resistance training. I'm a huge advocate of high intensity interval training. I'm just talking about low and slow cardio, especially fasted cardio that I've spoken about before, and um, and then reducing carbohydrates gradually. So all of that can definitely work. The problem is that you're doing it only for a very specific time, then you're getting ready for a show, you're getting super lean, you're at, you know, for a male bodybuilder, you know, you might be at three, four, five, six percent body fat, female bodybuilder, maybe you know, 12, 13, 14, 15% body fat or so. I know it's super low, not necessarily healthy, but what I'm saying is it's a sport, right? So it is what it is. That's what you're looking to achieve. And the difference though, is that what if you want to maintain leanness all year round? What if your goal isn't to put on a ton of muscle or a ton of size, but to be able to replenish your glycogen stores for energy inside of your muscle and your liver. So you feel good, you have good energy, but also maintain leanness. Well, what a lot of people use are what's called carb cycling. And I want to give you a very straightforward, because this does not have to be complicated. A lot of people like to make it way too complicated, but a very simplistic version of it. So what you are doing is you are manipulating your carbohydrates and typically only your carbohydrates in carb cycling. So carb cycling does not mean that you increase your fat intake if you're decreasing your carbs on that day. That's not necessarily it. That's something I want to talk about next week, which is called macro cycling. That is different than carb cycling. If we're talking about carb cycling, we're only talking about carbohydrates. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example. 
Let's say that on a high carbohydrate day, you're taking in 150 grams of carbohydrates. Let's say you're eating three meals per day. So that means you're eating 50 grams of carbs at breakfast, 50 at lunch, and 50 at dinner. I'm just throwing this out as an example, okay? Then let's say you're looking to do a moderate carbohydrate day, and that might be 100 grams of carbohydrates for the day. So 50 less, that's your moderate carbohydrate day. And that's going to be what? Well, maybe it's 50 carbs at breakfast, 50 at lunch, and zero carbs at dinner or zero net carbs at dinner. Let's just say that's one way to do it, right? You could eat very easily divided to 33 grams at each meal too. 33 at breakfast, 33 at lunch, 33 at dinner, and you're at your 100 grams of carbs for the day. Okay, that's moderate. And then we have a low carbohydrate day, which is a carbohydrate day where you're only taking, let's say, 50 grams of carbohydrates. And for that day, uh, maybe it's 16 grams of carbs at breakfast, 16 at lunch, and then around 16 or so at dinner, right? Just for easy math. So that would be an example of your high carb day, moderate carb day, and low carb day. Now, how would you use those in a carb cycling way? Well, what most people are typically doing is they're using this with an exercise routine. So let's say that you train, let's say that you're doing a resistance workout on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay, so Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, when you're doing your resistance training, high intensity interval training, that's going to be your high carbohydrate day. Okay, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, high carbohydrate day. And Friday night might even be a, a cheat meal or a flex meal, and it's going to have more carbohydrates in it. That might be the meal that you let yourself enjoy dessert or whatever it is that you'd like. And you just take that as part of your 150 carbohydrates. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if we think about it, resistance training days, those are the days that we're eating 150 carbs. Again, I'm just giving you an example of the number of carbohydrates for the day. Now on Tuesdays, let's say you do aerobic training. So Tuesdays are aerobic and that means that you're doing more, let's say, steady state cardio. You're on a bike or you're going for a jog, whatever it might be. And let's say you do 30 minutes. Okay. So that for you would be more of a moderate carbohydrate day. So on Tuesdays and let's say Saturdays are your aerobic day, right? So we're getting five days in a week. I'll, I'll explain this all at the end. I'll pull it all together. Those are moderate, carbo moderate carbohydrate days. You need a little less carbs in those days. Great. So that's a moderate carbohydrate day. You don't need a ton of energy for your non-resistance training days. You're going to burn more uh, strictly from body fat in the aerobic-based system. Great. So we're going to use that moderate carbohydrate days on Tuesdays and Saturdays for aerobic. So our days off for the week where we're not exercising at all, those would be Thursday and Sunday in this schedule, okay? So Monday, resistance training, high carb day. Tuesday, cardio, moderate carb day. Wednesday, resistance training, high carb day. Thursday, rest day, low carb day, right? That's our 50 carbs. Then on Friday, we're back to resistance training and that is going to be a high carb day. Saturday is aerobic based exercise and that's a moderate carb day. Sunday is a rest day and that is a low carb day. So this is an example of carb cycling. So you're eating more carbohydrates on the days that you're expending more metabolic energy and high intensity interval training, sprint interval training, that's the most metabolic uh, day Image or turbulence that's created in the body. Then aerobic based, a little bit less. And, uh, and that's a good thing, right? There's nothing wrong with that either. And that's more of a moder moderate carbohydrate day. So now why are people doing this? What would be the benefit? Well, the benefit is this. On the resistance training days, you're restoring more of the glycogen you're using up during the workout. So meaning like when you eat carbohydrates on those days, you're working out and you're using up a lot of your storage base, right? So all you're doing is replenishing the carbohydrates stored as glycogen that you've already stored and then used. So now you're just replenishing that. It's not adding body fat. It's not going to body fat. 
On the moderate carbohydrate days, yes, you're burning your oxidizing body fat. You are oxidizing, um, oh, and you're, you're burning, of course, glucose as well. And you're doing that every single day of the week. I don't want to make it in every single hour of the day. I don't want to ever make it seem like you're only burning body fat or only burning glycogen, right? It doesn't work that way. So, um, but it's allowing you to do a little bit less. Now, on your rest days, well, you're not expending as much glycogen. You're not breaking down as much glycogen to turn into glucose. So on those days, you're doing a little less carbs. And the reason you're doing less carbs is that carbs are energy food and you don't need as much energy. So people do this as a weight loss technique. They use it as a way of, they don't have to deprive themselves of carbs every single day. If it's a day where they're doing high intensity interval training, they get to eat more carbs. And the days where it's more aerobic based, moderate carbs. And the day that they're not exercising, it's lower carbs. So it's, it's kind of, it's, I don't like to look at food as a reward. I think it's one of the worst ways to look at food. It really sets our children up and ourselves up for a bad view of what food is. But it just says, hey, different foods are used for different things. And the more carbs you eat, well, you need to make sure that you are actually expanding that as energy. So if you're more of the vata body type, more of an ectomorph, you can do higher carbohydrate days on pretty much every day because you're always sympathetic nervous system dominant. Not always, but you know what I'm saying. Your, your metabolism is stoked. It's at a much greater rate than an endomorph or more of a kapha based body type. So um, having said that, carb cycling is much better for the endomorph or uh, kapha body type. They're going to do much better with it. It's going to help them with leptin levels, like I spoke about last time. So meaning like if you get a higher carb day in there, great, your body's telling itself, hey, you know, we're not starving. We got carbs. Things are good. It's going to help calm any of that, that stress in the body related to lower carbohydrate, uh, chronic lower carbohydrate intake. So definitely better for the kapha endomorph body type. It can certainly help with uh, blood sugar and insulin levels, that's for sure. Remember, on your exercise days and your uh, aerobic days, that's going to help use up some of that blood sugar that may be in the bloodstream, uh, even though resistance training can temporarily spike that blood sugar because of the stress response in the body. So I've seen carb cycling work well, uh, no doubt about it, in my practice, in my body transformation practice way back in the day, in a functional medicine practice, integrative health-based practice. So I can definitely recommend it to you. The only thing I say to you is this, and, and I want to be you know, really careful with this is that you don't have to do it in order to be successful. And if you are going to use it, then you want to use it correctly. So what a lot of people talk about with macro cycling is not carb cycling. I'm going to talk about that next week because macro cycling is different than carbohydrate cycling or carb cycling, and both are beneficial, but just for radically different reasons. If you want to get the most out of carb cycling, what you really want to do is this. This is what I found be absolutely the most beneficial. Take, don't change the quantity of food, but instead of doing, let's say, a uh, sweet potato at lunch and uh, oatmeal in the morning and then rice at night, that would be your high carb day. Instead, you're simply going to do some berries in the morning on your, let's say, moderate carb day, a half a sweet potato, and then uh, again, maybe half the portion of rice if you wanted to on your moderate carb day, if, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, and on your low carb day, you're really going to turn that into vegetables. So you could certainly do some berries in the morning. But then it's veggies only at lunch and it's veggies only at dinner instead of the sweet potato or any of the starches. So what you're doing, though, is you are not adding in more um, calories, okay? This is really important because carb cycling doesn't work for everyone because they're not getting also the caloric deficit on their rest days. It works much better when you are still eating the same quantity of food. So for example, if half your plate is typically vegetables and then a quarter of the plate is a sweet potato and the quarters are protein and you put some olive oil on top of all of it, great. On your um, moderate carb days, take that sweet potato, cut it in half, okay? Add a little bit more veggies like broccoli or cauliflower or Brussels sprouts or bok choy. And then on your low carb days, protein and then 75% of your plate, because you took this 25% that was sweet potato and you turned it now into veggies, right? Plus your 50%. So now, again, you're eating the same quantity of food, so you don't feel like you're depriving yourself, but it's low net carbohydrate food, like broccoli, right? So this is easy to do, but it's also the most effective. Because if you just add in then a whole avocado, you're probably not going to get the results that you are really looking for. So it's the same amount of fat, same protein, and you're just dropping those carbohydrates. That's where I've seen it be 
absolutely the most effective for leptin, for blood sugar, uh, not for leptin, I should say on low carb, but for, for blood sugar, for insulin, and for body fat loss. So it can be really, really effective doing it that way. Now, all of this said, it takes a little bit more planning, right? Because you need to know on your non-workout days, you're going to do less carbohydrates, right? And on your aerobic days, you're going to do a moderate amount. On your resistance training days, it might be your higher carbs. So it just takes a little bit more planning. Now, if you're someone that doesn't mind doing this, then it can be highly effective for you. I teach um, meal planning inside of IHP. If you love going deep on overall health, I would definitely check out Integrative Health Practitioner. Uh, it can be it, basically it's teaching you how to heal yourself and heal others to go on and become a certified health coach. Uh, you don't have to be a practicing health coach, but certainly you could check out more about that there if you'd like. No doubt about it. We're happy to chat with you about that. But I'll also say this is that in order to lose weight and burn body fat, you don't have to do carb cycling. I'm not against it. it I have seen it uh, work and be very effective, but you can also be on an overall healthy nutrition plan with one flex meal a week that is high or carbohydrate and then uh, low to moderate, depending on where you're at, until you're able to lose the weight as well. I don't want to get too deep into that today. It's a topic for a different conversation. I will be talking more about it. It has more to do with body types. It has more to do with hormone levels and metabolism, but certainly I've chatted about it before. I wanted to go just deep today on... I would say, not say deep, but I went over the foundation of carb cycling. And if it interests you, of course, I can always talk more about it. I'm happy to answer your questions. But I think that was a pretty uh, foundational-based show on how you're able to begin to implement it in your life if you choose to. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I'm going to do a follow-up next week if you want to stay tuned on macro cycling and for some people, maybe why it may be better than carb cycling, but of course, I let you decide. My job is to present you with the inflammation, <laughs> with the inflammation, no, the information, and then simply uh, allow you to adapt it to your life as you best see fit. And then, of course, always happy to do follow-up shows and answer your uh, questions as needed. Today's show was episode 2077. You can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast for all previous shows. That includes intermittent fasting shows. Uh, that includes gut health shows, female hormones, thyroid, you name it. It's all over there at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Happy to help and definitely stay tuned for next week where I do a follow-up on this topic. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And this week is a big celebration for us over at Equalife. It is Equalife's first anniversary, switching from Equilibrium Nutrition to Equalife. And we couldn't be more excited to be able to share this celebration with you. All this week, we're actually giving away our Equalife based t shirts, free men and women's t shirts on all qualifying orders over $129. This is an amazing $19.95 to $29.95 value, and yet yours completely free while supplies last. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash Equalife for all of the details. And again, thank you so much for being a part of the Equalife community.